Good afternoon, Shane. Welcome to Blue Notes, and thanks for joining us today. The result yesterday came in towards the top end of consensus expectations. The, the dividend was perhaps a bit of a positive surprise for some, but how have you seen the response from investors, from the analysts, from the media even? Well, it was a good result, and we're really pleased with it. It's a clean result. So, you know, as I said yesterday in my notes, I didn't have to spend a lot of time as CFO explaining the numbers which means you can really get into what the drivers were behind it. And the drivers were really pretty strong, as Mike said, in almost all of our business lines. And that was what the, the, the market liked. The other thing that it showed was really the beauty of this portfolio of businesses that we have at ANZ, where we had some that are in very mature markets with really good returns and solid kind of um, profitable dynamics. And then we've got other businesses that are very much in a growth dynamic. And we got a great balance of both of those this half. Probably, I would say, certainly over the last four or five years, it's the best balanced result we've had between growth and return. And both you and Mike made the point that having that diversification means that you don't have to go out on the risk curve and chase, in a, in a sort of low growth environment, chase riskier business. Yeah. I mean, it's, an, it's, it's inherent in all businesses want to grow and businesses want to have more customers and do more business. And so, you know, when you have a broader portfolio of opportunities for you, you can put your resources and your efforts and your management time where they're best, you know, where they can get the best return for shareholders. And when you have a relatively narrow business, you don't get a lot of choice. And so typically what happens in banks, when you don't get a lot of choice, you're forced to take more and more risk in order to get that growth. And, then, and the lovely thing about ANZ today is that we don't have to do that. And so we were able to kind of step back a little bit and really evaluate risk-adjusted returns and then allocate resources appropriately. Because one of the, the criticisms, and indeed there's still sceptics out there about the Asian super regional strategy, is that you don't get the, res the returns that you should be getting. Uh, but in fact, this is another advantage of having that super regional yeah, strategy. Yeah, th th you know, this, this half showed that we can get very strong growth in Asia, which we, which we did, you know, really strong double digit growth again in Asia, and have a very good return. I think there's sometimes a, a bit of a misunderstanding in some quarters of the marketplace about return. Return is one way of generating shareholder value, but growth is another. And as long as you're generating a return above your cost of capital, you know, that's, a, that's the right thing to be doing. And we pointed out last year that uh, a 20% ROE business that's growing at 5% per annum, so something that sort of looks like Australia banking, creates, a, creates about the same amount of value as a 13% ROE, ROE business that's growing at 10% per annum, i.e. something that sort of looks like Asia. So they both create value for shareholders, and that's the great thing of ANZ, we have, we have uh, exposure to both. There was also a very strong component of, of trading profits, which perhaps are not rated as highly as, as, more, um, as less volatile earning streams. Are those trading profits a core part of that better Asia picture, or is it something that just adds there? It's really it's the cream on the on the top there. It is a, it's it's a reasonable part of the business, and it did have a very good half in trading. But our business in markets, which is so critical to the whole super regional strategy, because the strategy is about intermediating and servicing trade and capital flows. And one of the ways you do that is by helping customers hedge their foreign exchange exposures, for example. So the strategy is really to get more customer volume in that business. And if you look over the last three or four years, half on half, year on year growth in sales, so the customer driven piece has been really steady. You know, low double digit, just consistent growth. And this was another half like that. But on the back of that, in order to service those customer flows, we have to do some trading. And the trading that we do at ANZ is really executing for customers. And that, therefore, it's highly correlated. So it's not as volatile as you might say in an investment banking uh, uh, franchise. And so do you think you're winning over some of the, the bears out there with the Asian strategy? I think so. I mean, I think obviously there will always be people who are quite rightly uh, asking tough questions. They should. They've got to keep us honest. But the reality is we are, we are winning them over. And the way that we win them over is through delivery. And uh, that's why we stressed in this half that our business in Asia in particular, the return on equity of that business today is above our cost of capital. Now, we're not claiming that it's a lot above, it's only a little bit above, but that says we're now getting at that tipping point where it's today creating value for shareholders. Uh, two things that were not um, necessarily not uh, clean, but were a bit more complicated, were the, the forward impacts of the Federal Reserve tapering program and the translation effects of the, the shift in the Australian dollar. Uh, can you sort of... 25 words or less, sure. work through how those... I mean, look, the, 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 the tapering is really just responding to the fact that the world today, not just from the US, is really awash with liquidity. There's money being printed all over the place, and that money finds its way into the banking system, and it has an impact on very, very low interest rates. For a bank, 
um, that can cause all sorts of, I guess, distortions in our, in our earnings. So it means that on deposits that we have from customers, we don't earn as much revenue from those. So as tapering reduces and there's less liquidity around, what you would normally see is that spreads on deposits and loans to that extent will start to rise. So banks are well positioned to actually generate better returns in a rising interest rate uh, environment. So that, that was the, and of course, a lot of the analysts are trying to figure out when's that gonna happen, and, and none of us have a crystal ball, but that's clearly a, a positive. The impacts of foreign exchange are very real for ANZ. The whole point of the strategy is to give exposure some level of, um, investors some level of exposure to, to Asia, and with that comes some currency exposure. We hedge that in the short term to try and remove the volatility, but the reality is that exposure is there. So when the Australian dollar is lower, which it was this year, those offshore earnings look bigger in Australian dollar terms. And we were pretty upfront about explaining how much that was. Um, our top line revenue growth, uh, as reported, was um, well over 6%. But actually, if you remove the impact of foreign exchange and say, what if the currency hadn't moved, it was only 3.6. So we're pretty upfront about for investors understanding what that exposure is. And you are capital uh, comfortable, obviously, with the capital generation. Yeah, so I mean, we hold more capital than we've ever held before. That looks likely under regulation when we know with this new DSA regulation that we're going to have to hold more. And again, that was another question that a lot of investors had, well, what do you think the right number is for that going forward? We set it somewhere between eight and a half and nine as a general rule of percent uh, um, in terms of capital ratios. And that's what we'll be targeting. We're more than comfortable that we have you know, the right kind of profitability, the right dividend payout, um, and the right structure of our business to achieve that. Thanks again for your time, Shane, and, and thanks for talking to Blue Notes. Thank you.